an hour-long standoff coming to an end on the city's southwest side. Sarah Costa with the latest developing story that we've been following throughout the morning. The trial of Otis McCain continuing this noon with jurors being presented more evidence in the capital murder case. Erica Hernandez has a look at what jurors have seen so far. Live from Case at 12, the news at noon starts right now. It was an early morning shooting, then seven hours for San Antonio police and SWAT working a standoff at a Southwest Side apartment complex. It all ended about an hour ago. It all happened at the Casa Morado Apartments, 9300 block of Somerset. Sarah Costa live with the latest update. Sarah, that standoff ended. Did anyone come out of the apartment unit that the SWAT was surrounding? Yes, Max, we actually just spoke to police about 20 minutes ago, and they say that a 13-year-old teenager and his mom were peacefully coaxed out of that apartment unit by negotiators. Now, whether or not they are suspects or involved in the shooting that happened early this morning at this complex is still being investigated, but just take a look at this video that we shot from inside the complex early this morning. Now, police say that they were called out to the Southwest Side apartment complex around four o'clock this morning for a shooting. When they arrived, they found a man outside of the complex with a bullet wound to his head. The victim, who police say is a 27 or 28 year old man, was taken to the hospital in critical condition around six o'clock this morning. SWAT was called out after police say their investigation looking for the shooting suspect or suspects led to an apartment unit on the top floor of one of the complex's buildings. For hours, negotiators attempted to make contact with those inside the unit. Residents in that building were evacuated and others in nearby buildings were urged to stay inside. This went on for seven hours. Police say finally that 13 year old boy and his mother were walked out peacefully. We spoke with one of the residents early this morning about what she heard and fears that the complex is no longer safe for her family. Around three, I was in my kitchen making a midnight snack when I heard like five or six gunshots and instantly I grabbed my daughter and I ran to my room. I lived here for six years and this is about like the fourth, fifth time this happened. Not this bad though, it's actually the first time this has been this bad. It gets more scary every time. And at last check, that victim is still in critical condition, according to police. As for that 13 year old boy and mother who were coaxed out of that apartment, they have been taken into custody for questioning from police. Police still trying to figure out if they are suspects of the shooting that happened early this morning or if they are involved at all. And they say charges for those two are still pending at this time. Live from the southwest side, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Max and Ursula. Thank you, Sarah. We'll stay on top of that. More evidence, meantime, being presented to the jury today in the capital murder trial of Otis McCain. That's right. It is the eighth day of the trial. Our Erica Hernandez joining us live with the latest. So, Erica, what kind of evidence was presented this morning? Ursula and Max, so some of the evidence that was presented this morning to the jury was from Otis McCain's home that was made right after his arrest. Now, they included a live bullet, a black Spurs cap, black Nike shoes, and custody paperwork. They were all collected and shown to the jury. Now, if you recall, last week, the traffic bars from public safety headquarters were presented. Today, they were brought back in, and a Bear County Crime Lab trace evidence forensic scientist took the stand to discuss the testing she did. Now, this was testing done on the paint transfers from McCain's vehicle and comparing them to the traffic bars. Uh, I did not find any differences between um, this item, this unknown item that was collected from the rear window and the samples that I took from the traffic bars. Now, three different tests were done to conclude that paint from the traffic bars did match the paint transfers that were on McCain's video. Now, court has adjourned for lunch and will resume at 1 o'clock. Max, Ursula. Thank you, Erica. New at noon, two San Antonio men now free. The pair exonerated after being convicted of drug charges. John Gabriel Cape and Louis Garcia were arrested back in August of 2017. This came after a confidential informant told investigators that there was methamphetamine inside a San Antonio home. However, investigators say that in 2020, they got strong evidence that the informant had planted those drugs. Earlier this month, the Court of Criminal Appeals exonerated Cape and Garcia. Their cases against them have been dismissed. A third person was charged in the case and 
She passed away before being exonerated. A family grieving after a driver hit and killed a woman in Leon Valley overnight. Police say that the woman was walking near the 7200 block of Sulky Lane when a driver in a blue car hit her. This is near Hebner and Bandera Roads on the northwest side. That driver did stop and try to help the victim. The woman was pronounced dead at the scene. And right now, police investigating a string of robberies at Northwest Side convenience stores. At least three stores were hit in less than two hours. First, the officers were called to a Circle K. This is the 3900 block of Fredericksburg Road. This happened just after three this morning. Police tell us in this situation, a man walked into the store, flashed a gun, then demanded cash from the register for taking off with the money. Then, less than a half hour later, a similar scene at the 7-Eleven. This is the 4900 block of Fredericksburg Road. Now, police tell us in this robbery, the suspect also had a gun, also made off with cash. And then the third one, police call it to this 7-Eleven. This is the 9400 block of Bandera Road. This happening at 430 this morning. That's near Braun Road. Once again, police say a man walked into the store, pointed a gun at a worker, then demanded money. He then ran off with the cash. Now, we've reached out police for more information. So far, they say they have not said if these robberies are in fact connected. New legislation in Texas going after people selling the extremely dangerous opioid fentanyl. This morning, Governor Greg Abbott signed a bill that increases the penalties for making and distributing fentanyl. Under the new law, the minimum sentence for the manufacture or delivery of the drug increases from 15 years for an amount of 200 to 400 grams, 20 years for any amount over 400 grams. Out of the latest on the pandemic, nearly every state across the U.S. continues to see a new surge in cases. Some hospitals are overwhelmed once again, facing an influx of patients battling the virus. As ABC's Rena Roy reports, most of those patients are unvaccinated. COVID-19 tightening its grip on the U.S. yet again. The Delta variant now estimated to account for 83% of all new cases, mostly infecting those without their shots. In Tennessee, only 38% of the state is fully vaccinated. This hospital in Memphis reopening and re-expanding their COVID unit. Sad because we have that vaccine to help reduce this and a majority of the patients are coming through the door unvaccinated. Many local officials cracking down on COVID-19 rules. New York City's mayor requiring unvaccinated workers at city-run health care facilities to get tested for the virus weekly. And at any point, you could decide, hey, I'm ready to get vaccinated, then you don't need to get tested weekly anymore. The Clark County, Nevada Commission issuing a mask mandate for employees regardless of vaccination status. The mayor of Houston also considering asking people to mask up again with the Lambda variant now confirmed in the city. Those who are unvaccinated, you need to get vaccinated. But even some with their shots are getting sick. An aide to House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and a White House staffer are both fully vaccinated, testing positive. Though health officials say symptoms are usually milder for the fully vaccinated. The good news is people People are not getting hospitalized. People are not dying if they've been vaccinated, and that's the key. And despite growing concern as some classrooms reopen, lawmakers in at least eight states have banned mask mandates in schools. But hard-hit Kansas City is requiring all students to mask up. The mask debate is intensifying with the American Academy of Pediatrics saying everyone should wear face coverings in schools regardless of vaccination status. But the CDC saying those who have their shots can go maskless. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Another day, another chance for rain. A radar update is coming up. And coming up in sports, Jose Altuve doing big things on Jose Altuve Day. That's right, Larry Ramirez joins us. And we are doing a demonstration all day long. We want to show you just how hot it can get inside of a car. This is a live look at the temperature gauge. Ouch. Coming up after the break, meteorologist Sarah Spivey is live with tips to help keep you and your family safe. We might be seeing some cooler temperatures than normal this summer, but it's still out there and it's especially hot inside locked cars. That is right. As part of our latest KSAT community event, meteorologist Sarah Spivey joining us live outside of our KSAT studio. So Sarah, how's it look out there? Well, 
you know, if I'm being honest, it doesn't feel that bad outside right now. We've got some rain cool air temperatures in the 80s. But look at the temperature inside the vehicle. More than 110 degrees, 111. That is uh, a 20 plus degree difference from the outside temperature to the inside temperature of this vehicle. And with me today, I have Jennifer Northway of Safe Kids San Antonio, which is led by University Health System. Now, Jennifer, unfortunate statistic, more than 700 children have died in hot cars since 1998. Mm -hmm. What is Safe Kids San Antonio doing to help prevent these hot car deaths? Well, we are proud to partner this year with the Southwest Texas Regional Advisory Council, TxDOT, the Department of State Health Services, the Department of Family and Protective Services, and over 20 EMS and fire agencies throughout our 22 county service area to bring this message through our large temperature displays, as well as some of our tabletop temp temperature displays and messaging to talk to families about the importance of making sure we don't leave children or pets in a vehicle for even a minute. And that's great that Safe Kids San Antonio is doing that, but you know, it's not just leaving a child in the parking lot of right. a grocery store. Right. There are other ways that unfortunately children can be accidentally locked in vehicles. Can you talk a little bit to that? Sure. So, you know, kids love to play hide and seek, and that can be, um, unfortunately, children can think that a car is a safe place for them to hide. And so very important that as adults, we keep our keys in a space where kids can't have access to them. Because we forget, we often are using our child locks on our doors so that kids can't get out of the vehicle while we're moving. But if they happen to get in the car because they're playing, then they are locked in that vehicle and cannot get out unless an adult comes to get them. So we want to encourage folks, if, if families realize that their child is missing and they can't find them, first we need them to check any water source in their home. If they have a, a pool, above ground, in ground, whatever, check the water first. If they don't see them there, then check the vehicle. Uh, we have known that kids have hidden in trunks and inside cars. And then last place to look is in the home. They are safe in the home. They are not safe in water or in a vehicle. You know, that's really great advice, Jennifer. And you're going to be with us uh, for the rest of the day today. Coming up in the next half hour, we're going to be talking about more tips yeah. on how you can make sure that your child never gets locked in a vehicle. And we're doing an experiment inside of the vehicle. You know, it's not all that hot outside today. No. It's no. only in the 80s right now, but it's still very hot in this car. So make sure you stick around next half hour. We're going to have a look at that experiment and of course, more tips from you, Jennifer. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Max and Ursula, back to you. Great advice. Thank you, guys. All right. Well, we saw Sarah out there. We saw the heat. Let's take a live look out at the Alamo City. Justin, I'm not seeing the sun out there. Well, fairly cloudy right now. And Sarah just mentioned there's some rain-cooled air. There's some pop-up showers and shrooms already at this shower. We'll see more on the radar throughout the afternoon. So you may get some rain. Have the umbrella with you today. It's another one of those days. The aquifer is up a tenth of a foot to 670.4. Still a great number in the pollen count. Molds, still a big problem. Very high, 15,900. We have a radar update for you coming up. All right, welcome back. Happy Wednesday, 85 degrees out there. We've been checking in with Sarah Spivey, talking about how dangerous it can be, the heat in the car, leaving your kids there. But Justin, 85 degrees right now. It's not too bad. It's not too bad. And we've had a good stretch here of some pretty comfortable temperatures. That will change this weekend. So we got to enjoy it while it lasts. And we're also enjoying a few downpours again today. Radar starting to get a little bit more active. Let's look at what's on there right now. You see the activity down there around Victoria and down closer to the coast. We'll continue to see that through the afternoon. A few lightning strikes down there. But notice we are also starting to see some activity in the hill country and even right here in San Antonio. Let's zoom in a little bit closer here to town. And we've got one little cell there just north of the airport in between 1604 and 410. That is slowly pushing south. We've also had a few showers trying to pop up now just uh, south and west of Hollywood Park. Between Hollywood Park and Chavano Park there, another little downpour, maybe some rain around Churchill. And then this is working south uh, towards, uh, uh, looks like Wurzbach Parkway there. So that we may get some wet roads. Uh, in those parts of San Antonio. And it's going to be one of those hit or miss type days where you get some of these pop up showers. And you just have to be the lucky one to be underneath where these uh, develop. We've also got a little bit of activity starting to pop up around Sutherland Springs. Uh, that little shower just moved through and uh, there along 123. Uh, a little bit of activity too. And then showers and a few thunderstorms out in the hill country. Some nice looking thunderstorms. Nothing severe, but some good downpours there around Camp Wood with some lightning strikes 
showing up there. I think as we get into the afternoon, you'll see more of this. Uh, the radar may even get a little more active as uh, area of low pressure moves through east to west. This is an upper level low that will give us the lift we need. We've got pretty good moisture levels in place too. So all the ingredients to, to get some showers and storms over the next couple of days. And I think that this low will be to our west tomorrow, maybe even a better position for us to get uh, activity on the radar. We can see that shower and storm there off the corner of your screen. 83 degrees at the airport right now with that shower just to the north. East southeasterly winds at five miles per hour. And temperatures 86 Port SA, 88 right now at Stinson, 90. It's all the way up to 90 there in Pleasanton, but they're seeing quite a bit more sun. 90 in Catula, 87 Uvalde, and 81 right now in Rock Springs. Dew points even with the northeasterly wind still in the 70s, so it's still sticky out there. There's plenty of moisture to work with. In the forecast for today, Texas up to 91. We will put in a 30% chance of rain throughout the afternoon for those pop up downpours. Here's what the forecast looks like. We'll fast forward to six o'clock. Still shows some activity here and there around the area. This probably even underdoes it a little bit as we get into tomorrow. Again, maybe a little bit more coverage. I think the models aren't really picking up on that upper level low well enough to show you know, these showers and storms. I think there will be more of them by tomorrow afternoon with about a 40% chance of rain. And then after that, the rain shuts off and the heat cranks up because our low moves west, high pressure builds in. And that means by Friday afternoon, we're talking about some big time heat and this weekend too. It'll be hot. It will also be a little bit hazy. We're expecting some more of that Saharan dust to work in Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So just a heads up there. Here's uh, the heat index forecast next couple next five days, I should say. Notice the heat index by Friday jumps up to around 100. So beware, it's going to get hot and it will be humid too. 89 degrees tomorrow, 40% chance of rain, 94 Friday, 95 Saturday, 96 on Sunday, and mid 90s going into next week. Very typical July pattern now as we get into the weekend, but not for the next couple of days. We'll still see some rain showers around, guys. Thank you, Justin. All right, thank you so much, Justin. Hot in the weekend, hot on the court. Giannis Antetokounmpo getting the ring. Very well-deserved ring for Giannis and the Milwaukee Bucks. I mean, Giannis Antetokounmpo was very impressive in the Bucks clincher last night. And to me, the most impressive part, he went 17 for 19 from the free throw line, and he had been struggling in the series. Plus, Suns guard Chris Paul, does he plan to retire? Coming up. This, this is a feeling, like this is an addicting feeling. Like I love playing in the playoffs. I love playing in the finals. You know, I love playing when the ball is heavy. You know, and uh, then and, and this is the, the moment I want, I want to chase more. I want our team to keep build off this, you know, and uh, hopefully we can do it again. Giannis is addicted to winning. It fits him well in big board sports. Sixty-five thousand fans packed the Deer District outside Pfizer Forum in Milwaukee, and they all left very happy after the Bucks beat the Suns 105-98 to win the NBA Finals four games to two. Giannis Antetokounmpo gave a legendary performance with 50 points to go along with 14 rebounds and five block shots, and he went 17 for 19 from the free throw line. He got help when needed from guys like Chris Middleton, Drew Holiday, and Bobby Portis. The Bucks are NBA champions for the second time, winning it all 50 years after their first crown. Giannis signed a five-year Supermax contract before the season with this moment in mind. I wanted to get the job done, you know, uh, they, but that's my stubborn side. Like, it's easy to go somewhere and go and win a championship with somebody else. It's easy. I could go, I, I don't want to put anybody in the spot, but I could go to a super team and, you know, just do my part and win a championship, still one. But this is the hard way to do it, and this is the way I chose to do it. And we did it. Kissing that trophy must be an awesome feeling. He scored 33 of his 50 points in the second half and was named Finals MVP. Now, on the flip side, you had the agony of defeat. The Suns led the series two games to them, and then they lost four straight. The final three games of the series all went down to the wire. Suns head coach Monty Williams was classy in defeat, making sure to congratulate the Bucks. I took away from, I just wanted to come and congratulate you guys as a man, as a coach. Um, you guys deserve this. And um, I'm, I'm thankful for the experience. You guys made me a better coach. You made us a better team. Congratulations. 
Suns point guard Chris Paul just wrapped up his 16th NBA season and first one with the Suns. He's still in search of his first NBA championship and certainly was darn close to winning it all. I mean, I'll take some time and think about that, but right now, uh, you're just trying to figure out what you could have did more. You know, it's tough. Um, great group of guys, hell of a season, but um, this one's going to hurt for a while. Paul added that he's not ready to retire and it's time for him to get back to work. Yesterday was Jose Altuve Day, celebrating 10 years with the Astros and his first MLB hit in his debut 10 years ago. Last night, Jose celebrated by hitting a leadoff home run. He now has seven leadoff homers this season, tied with Kyle Schwarber for most in Major League Baseball. Altuve went two for four with two solo home runs, and the Astros beat the Indians nine to three, and the Tigers beat the Rangers four to one. All right, now we're in the NBA offseason. You gonna be bored? A little bit, but now <laughs> NFL is going to start ramping up. So then we'll get busy again. Are we camping with KSAT? High school football, BGC. Yes, we're camping with KSAT. Greg Simmons, the crew, we're out there, and he'll be live today at 5. Perfect. All right, Larry, thanks so much. All right, a lot of news to come. Wildfire dangers in the West now having effects on other communities across the country as far as New York. We're going to explain after the break. Americans are spending a lot of time in front of different screens these days. When you aren't looking at the computer, chances are you're looking at a phone or a TV nearby, and that can strain your eyes. Coming up today at 5, 12 inner size, Marilyn Moritz explains why you shouldn't hold off on your next routine eye exam. New this noon, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi rejecting two Republicans tapped by House GOP leader Kevin McCarthy to sit on the committee investigating the January 6th Capitol insurrection. Now, Speaker Pelosi citing the integrity of the investigation as the reason. In a statement, she says she will not accept the appointments of Indiana Representative Jim Banks, who McCarthy picked to be the top Republican on the panel, and will also reject Ohio Representative Jim Jordan. Both Banks and Jordan voted to overturn Joe Biden's presidential victory after the insurrection. In Germany, people continuing to deal with the aftermath of destructive flooding there. Cleanup and rebuilding will take months, perhaps even years. As CNN's Fred Plankton reports, it could cost billions of dollars. Folks are trying to pick up the pieces here in the uh, areas that were so affected by the floods in Germany and, of course, in parts of Belgium as well. We're in the town of Bad Münster Eifel, which is an absolutely beautiful, very historic town, a medieval town that normally would see a lot of tourists this time of year. And what happened here is that the river that you see here, the Alft, um, as the rain was coming down, it just went and rose very, very quickly and simply obliterated a lot of the things that were in its path. One of the things that we see here, like in so many towns, is that the solidarity between people is just absolutely enormous. There's folks coming from all over Germany to just lend a helping hand. Now, the German Chancellor Angela Merkel, she also visited this town today, and she said she wanted to assure the folks here and in all of the affected areas that the German government would help. Um, that's the point here is that, on the one side, aid is immediately paid out and bureaucratically, together with the state. The state will decide this on Thursday, the state premier told me. And then we will together do everything we can so that the money quickly reaches people who often are left without nothing other than what they are wearing and who are therefore dependent on the support. When you speak to people here, one of the interesting things that they keep saying is that they understand that with global warming, with climate change, with the world's climate emergency, they might have to rebuild their town differently than they have before. They say they understand that natural disasters, like the one that they saw here, could become more frequent. And that's certainly one of the things that they say they're going to think about when they rebuild this town and try to make sure that if there is an event, like the one that we saw last week here in Germany, that the town would be prepared and the infrastructure would be in place to hopefully cope with it as well. Fred Plekin, CNN, Bad Münster Eifel, Germany. Meanwhile, back here in the United States, western states are in the middle of a hectic wildfire season. The largest fire burning in the country, still the bootleg fire in Oregon. Its effects are crossing the borders of that state. That fire creating hazy skies in Montana and can be seen as far as New York. The massive flames also spewing smoke and ash into the air as high as six miles. Oregon's bootleg fire now grown to 606 square miles. For reference, that's about half the size of the state of Rhode Island. At least 67 homes destroyed, another 3,400 
listed as threatened. More than 2,000 people now under orders to evacuate or ready to flee at a moment's notice. Taking a look outside with live cam. Ha, we are having the strangest July that rain? ever. It's raining in some places. Oh. It's overcast in others. Yep, that is rain. It's coming out pretty good right there by the airport. We've got some downpours popping up right over San Antonio. We're going to continue to see more of this activity throughout the afternoon. Let's click the radar right now and you can see where we have these pop up showers. Most of this activity is uh, isolated or at least uh, affecting isolated areas, but uh, we're seeing them pop up here in San Antonio and especially on the northeast side there along 410, right where we had the camera pointed. That's where that pocket of heavy rain is at this hour. We've also got some showers and storms popping up between Sutherland Springs and Stockdale. More activity just west of Seguin and north of Gonzales. And then here is that activity I was speaking of here in San Antonio. There's 410 right there. Uh, there's the airport. So this is just uh, east of the airport where some of that heavy rain is falling. And this will continue to push slowly south into the uh, Alamo Heights area. And then uh, there at 410. Long 35 seeing another little downpour, pretty good downpour uh, working south and then more activity popping up near Churchill and then uh, down along uh, 410 and I-10 right at that interchange seeing some good heavy rain there. Meantime, some showers popping up across the hill country. We've seen a few lightning strikes here in the air, but mostly this is just rain, some good downpours and you may pick up a quick tenth of an inch out of some of this activity. We'll call for a 30% chance rain throughout the afternoon temperatures will be in the 80s for now. We'll try to get it up to around 90 this afternoon and then more chances for rain tomorrow. We'll have another look at that potential here in just a couple minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. The bipartisan infrastructure deal that senators brokered with President Joe Biden now hanging on by a thread. Senators struggling to reach a compromise over how to pay for nearly one trillion dollars in public work spending. Tensions rising as Republicans get prepare to block today's procedural vote with a filibuster, saying they need more time. Restless Democrats say it's time to at least start the debate as talks continue. And speaking of President Biden, he is in Ohio today, all part of his ongoing efforts to push his economic policies. It is the third visit of Biden's presidency to Ohio, the only state Biden lost that he had visited multiple times as president. Now, this comes ahead of a planned town hall that's taking place tonight. It'll be President Biden's first while in office. The one hour long event starts at 8 p.m. tonight on CNN. The discussion expected to focus on a wide range of issues facing the nation, including COVID and, of course, the economy. A lot left here on the news at noon. We are talking sincere McCormick, your boy Sin. That's his Twitter handle. Your boy. Handle. Your boy Sin. Uh, <laughs> Larry's going to be back to explain. I need an explanation. All right, take a look at this. We've been watching the temperature gauge all morning long. It's measuring just how hot it can get inside of a locked car. After the break, meteorologist Sarah Spivey joins us live to explain some of the dangers you need to be aware of. We're up to 117 degrees. Wow. Temperatures rising. We all know that South Texas heat can be dangerous, and when you're inside a closed car, those dangers only increase. That's right. Heat stroke something to look out for, especially when it comes to your kids. Nine children have died of heat stroke while inside cars this year alone. That is according to NoHeatStroke.com. Meteorologist Sarah Spivey is here live. She's outside the KSAT studios trying to show you exactly what you need to know to stay safe. Yeah, thank you so much, Max and Ursula. I'm here with Jennifer Northway of Safe Kids San Antonio, which is led by University Health System. And you were just talking about, unfortunately, nine children have passed away uh, from hot car related deaths. The most recent one happening in Texas, in mm -hmm. Tyler, Texas. So yeah. even though this July has been a little bit cooler than seasonally average, we're still running the risk of hot car deaths. Take a look at the temperature. It says 93 degrees outside. The reason for that, it's a little hotter than what Justin's temperature is reading and that's because we're over the asphalt right now so it is going to be a little hotter but 118 degrees in the vehicle that is almost 25 degrees warmer than what the outside temperature is now jennifer we were talking during the break here it's not just uh this happens to every 
every parent possible, even the loving parents, you can end up having, unfortunately, a hot car death. Mm -hmm. What can you do as a parent to make sure that this never happens to you? Well, we've all been uh, driving somewhere and completely forgot how we got there. And so these are those situations where, unfortunately, a child could be unintentionally left in a vehicle. So we want families to remember, uh, no matter who it is, the parents, babysitter, aunts, uncles, Place reminders in your vehicle so that you can make sure to check that back seat, whether that's a backpack, the, the diaper bag, a bear, a shoe, your phone, something to make you look in the back seat. Uh, and some other simple things to do are to keep your keys out of a, a place for a child to find them. Kids can think a car is a safe place to play and it's just not. Uh, and make sure that your doors are locked and your trunk is locked when your vehicle's not in use so that kids don't climb in there. That's great advice, Jennifer. And again, it's not a particularly hot July day today. It's still definitely hot outside for us <laughs> right hot. now. But we are doing a little experiment to just demonstrate how hot it can get in the car. Mm -hmm. Since 930 this morning, we've had chocolate on the dash. You can see that it's totally melted. We're starting to see the chapstick sweat a bit. And then the gummy bears have formed a patty of gummy bears <laughs> rather than individual gummy bears. We're going to be continuing to be out here. Jennifer is going to be back with us at 5 and at 6 tonight. We'll show you the progress of our experiment and of course we'll have more tips on how to make sure that a hot car death never happens in your family. Thank you so much for being here with us, Thank Jennifer, you. with Safe Kids, Safe Kids San Antonio, led by the University Health System. We'll look forward to checking back in with you at 5 and 6. Max and Ursula? Thank you so much, Sarah. Good information for sure, especially now that we know it's going to be getting hotter. That's right. That said 119 as she was leaving. Yeah. Oh, but taking a look outside, it went, oh, Not raindrop. Today. Raindrop Not hit today. the camera, Justin. <laughs> Still rain coming down. You know, it's interesting. This is right by the airport, but technically at this moment, the airport is still not reporting rain, or at least it hasn't reported any of the rain gauge. That rain shower just to the east of the airport. But rain is coming down there on 410. The average today is 95. The average low is 75. The record 102. That was set back in 1911. Record low is 65. Set back in 1923. We'll be below average today. More chances for rain ahead. We'll look at the radar also coming up. All right, welcome back and happy Wednesday, 1245 this afternoon. We were checking in with Sarah Spivey. We saw how hot it could get in a car. Last check was 119. Much different circumstances right outside, though. Yeah, but in a couple of days, that information that Sarah's giving us right now is what she's talking about. Mm -hmm. it, it is going to heat up this weekend. And really, you got to be careful all summer long, even today, as they've shown with uh, some cloudy skies out there, you can still get those temperatures up really high. But yes, it'll be even worse this weekend. Uh, we're expecting temperatures to jump up into the mid to even upper 90s. In the meantime, we'll deal with some showers today. I think we can handle that. Uh, we've seen that most of July, it feels like. And you can see the radar is getting a little more active with some pop-up showers and a few thunderstorms out there. Uh, let's look a little closer here at uh, San Antonio and points east. Seguin will shower just to your west. Also seeing some activity in northern parts of Gonzales County. Uh, there along 183 and along I-10 as well. Some activity between uh, Stockdale and Lavernia there. And then we've had uh, showers and storms popping up here within San Antonio. Uh, I would point out, too, there's a little alpha boundary right there. It's on the very edge of your screen. But that's what these showers and storms do. They put out outflow boundaries, that cooler air. It's kind of like a mini front, and it can kick off more activity. So it, it really is going to depend on where some of these outflow boundaries set up on who gets rain and who doesn't. But at the moment, we've got a nice little downpour here now just south of 410 working towards the Terrell Hills area. This is slowly drifting south. This is what we were looking at on live cam. And then some rain around Windcrest along I-35, Riddiman Road and I-35. There's a nice little cell just to your east. You're going to get some good rain out of that. And then more activity right along the 410 and I-10 interchange near Baconis Heights. Uh, looking at uh, some rain there. Other parts of the city, the sun is still hot. It's still warm and humid. So again, it really does depend on where you are. Uh, looking at the, the hill country, Concan, you just got a good rainstorm there. We've had a few lightning strikes with that activity, but so far, or at least within the last couple minutes, looks like the lightning has uh, calmed some. Let's uh, take a look at the satellite picture, too, with the radar there. And you can see how these clouds kind of bubble up. And uh, we'll get more of that throughout the afternoon. These clouds will build, turn into a quick shower storm, and then fall apart, and we'll get more development after that. 
Uh, there's the scene, a live cam. Mem uh, remember, we showed you that uh, cell just east of the airport. That's what we're looking at, and rain starting to come down. 88 at Stinson, 86 Kelly, 84 at Randolph. We've got northeasterly winds anywhere from 5 to 15 miles per hour. Uh, temperatures 87 in Divi. We're close to 90 in Pleasanton, 86 Holotus, 82 Burning Stage. And uh, 90 in Cotulo, one of the warm spots this afternoon. 90 in Kennedy as well, where the sun is out. And the forecast does call for temperatures to get up around 90 here in San Antonio. We'll keep a 30% chance rain in the forecast there across the board. And the computer models continue to show these pop-up showers and storms. I think we'll get a little more coverage tomorrow as an upper-level low passes by. We'll be in a good position to get some more rain. After that, though, everything dries out and we'll start to see uh, some warmer temperatures this weekend. There goes our upper level low. This is Friday at 5 o'clock. High pressure begins to build in. And there we go. That's the heat high that we typically don't want to see in the summer. It will be sitting over us much of this weekend. Very quickly, I want to show you that uh, we will get some more of that Saharan dust working in this weekend, too. This is one of our models that shows the dust. And by Friday morning, starting to work in. By Saturday and Sunday, we'll have a plume around here. It doesn't look too terribly thick. But there will be some haze in the atmosphere. And for those who are allergic to that type of thing or have asthma, beware. Another plume headed our way this weekend. 89 tomorrow, 40% chance rain. 94 Friday, 95 Saturday, 96 on Sunday. And that heat index near 100 over the weekend. We'll be right back. Camping with KZ, powered by Davis Law Firm. Some encouraging signs yesterday as the Dallas Cowboys boarded their charter flight to LAX. Ezekiel Elliott looking for a bounce back season after the worst of his pro career. Camp will mark the first time we'll get a chance to hear from Zeke this offseason. Amari Cooper, who missed all the offseason workouts following ankle surgery, reports on time. And head coach Mike McCarthy beginning his second season, but his first ever in Oxnard. So the Cowboys arriving yesterday afternoon to their secure team headquarters. Only players, coaches and staff are allowed on hotel property. Our crew there said every car they saw driving in was checked by security that has set up a tight perimeter. The only place for the media and fans is at the two practice fields adjacent to the property and those fields are ready for practice. For veterans such as offensive lineman Zach Martin who struggled with injuries last season, it's good to be at camp. Yeah, it's great to be back. It's great to be in the weather. Uh, it just feels like training camp when you come out here. So um, it's a great opportunity for us to connect as a team, kind of be isolated in this one little area and, and get to work and kind of build our foundation for the season. Check out our Camping with the Cowboys key dates today. State of the Cowboys address with Jerry Jones, Stephen Jones, and Mike McCarthy. Thursday is the first practice, Saturday opening ceremonies, and Sunday night, Jerry Jones will be live on Instant Replay. Preseason honors continue to pour in for Sincere McCormick as the UTSA running back has been named the preseason candidate for the Doak Walker Award as announced today by the PWC SMU Athletic Forum. McCormick is one of 82 FBS players, including one of four from Conference USA, named to the Doak Walker Award preseason candidate list. This accolade comes on the heels of the 2020 Doak Walker Award semifinalists being selected for the Maxwell Award watch list on Monday and as the Conference USA preseason offensive player of the year on Tuesday. Led by Giannis Adenokounmpo, the Bucks beat the Suns 105-98 to win Game 6 and the NBA Championship in six games last night. Today, Giannis took the Larry O'Brien Trophy and the Bill Russell Finals MVP Trophy to a Chick-fil-A drive through and he ordered 50 nuggets for his 50-point performance. That's how you celebrate, right? Coach Bud is certainly glad Giannis is on his side. To win a championship, you got to make free throws. You got to make shots, and he's made shots all throughout the playoffs. He's made free throws all throughout the playoffs. Um, six block shots, I think. However many points, he's, he's just he's off the charts. He's the MVP of the NBA Finals. And Chris this is my second time coaching him. I know what he puts into his craft. I know the dedication, and so when I hear those sentiments about his career because he hasn't won a championship is just silly you know um, it's hard enough to make it to the NBA let alone be an all-time great which is what he is so this is Giannis at the drive through yeah it's Giannis I want a 50 piece please <laughs> 50 piece versus 50 piece absolutely <laughs> All right, I gotta say the Chris Paul criticism because he doesn't have a rank still one of the best point guards of my generation and I feel as happy as I am for Giannis I'm really that bum for Chris Paul because he's certainly deserves an NBA championship. So I got a few more years left? He does. He's going to keep playing. All right, Larry, thank you. Thank you.
All right, speaking of Hall of Famers, we got a couple in our midst. Yes! Hey! You keep fault doling out the company. I mean, we have to. They're great people. Jeez. He just wants he wants you to bring some of that probably to the station. That's why he keeps rolling out those compliments. But I love if it. If there's anything left. Yes, it is National Hot Dog Day. Yes, indeed. Look at this. is a dog and a half, man. And you know where you get this thing? At the Doghouse Beer Garden. John Bird is here. And these are gourmet dogs, right? Yes, they are. Absolutely. Okay, okay you're going to show us kind of the, a neat way to top a hot dog. Yeah, right. so one of our kind of signature deals at Doghouse is the eight points of sauce on the top. So oh. give it a go. Two, oh, three, I already messed up. Four, How are you six, doing? Seven. Uh, oh, look at uh, you! Okay. And we're going to tell you how you can win a free hot dog, one of their gourmet hot dogs. Hey, need something to wash that down? Oh, uh, well, Steffi Pena Frost from Princess and the Monkey is here. Yeah. What have you got? A nice, quick, little refreshing cocktail. You put some lemon sorbet. You put some Prosecco and top it off with some homemade lemon cello. All right, and you heard the word lemon or you've been there a couple lemon, of times lemon. because it is there kind of a go. fruity party and we're going to be doing some crafts and also some snacks and... Mm -hmm. How's that? Refreshing? Refreshing. Ooh. All right. Ooh. Ooh. Yes. yes. Mm. Make you feel like you want to relax? Yes, a nice spa day would be perfect. Yes, get ready to get glammed up. If your mini-me's want to spend a relaxing day doing things like maybe mom does, we are going to show you a local boutique spa that caters to kids. Okay. Hey, social question of the day. Back to hot dogs. What is your favorite topping on a hot dog? <laughs> if it's got to be one thing, it's got to be mustard. Oh, let us know at SA Live Case Out on Facebook and Twitter, and we'll share that in a little bit.